Okay, we left off here, um, number 30, improper administration of CPR could result in a fracture of which bone, and that would be the um, xiphoid process of the sternum. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is get um, is leave the PowerPoint for, for just a little bit and open up two of the figures that are going to be on your lab um, assignment for this week. And one would be um, the bones of the skeleton. Okay. I don't know what it is when this happens, but okay. Well, you can see most of them. Okay, so the collarbone is called the clavicle. The shoulder blade is called the scapula. And as you can see, you, you can see it from the anterior view because you can see the scapula even better um, from the posterior view. The humerus is the upper arm bone. Um, and then we have the sternum, which remember the sternum has the mastoid, the body, and the xiphoid process. Um, those are not labeled, but it's showing you here mastoid, um, body, and xiphoid process. And then we have the ribs. And with the ribs, um, just for review, the first seven pairs are the true ribs. Then pairs 8 through 12 are the um, false ribs. And pairs 11, uh, I'm sorry, oh, yeah, 11 and 12, which are right here, pair 11 and pair 12 are the floating ribs because they don't connect to the sternum at all. Then we have the vertebrae. Um, the bones of the forearm are the radius and the ulna. And if you're looking at the um, anterior view, the radius is on the same side as the thumb. So the radius is on the same side as the thumb and the ulna is on the same side as the pinky. Um, the hip bone which consists of three bones called the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Um, the, the, those all together are called the pelvic girdle. And by the way, the pectoral girdle is the um, clavicle and the scapula. The wrist bones are the carpal bones. The bones of the hand are the metacarpal bones. And the bones of the fingers are called the phalanges. The upper, the thigh bone is the femur. The kneecap is the patella, the shin bone is the tibia, and then the thinner bone that goes uh, that's on the lateral side of the tibia is called the femur. I'm sorry. The femur is the thigh bone. The fibula is the thin bone that's on the lateral side of the tibia. And then the ankle bones are the tarsal bones. So I wanted to show you that. And then also the... Um, skull bones labeled in the lateral view because here we go well you can't see the words here but that's okay if you print this out you can see all of it but for some reason when I save it as a PDF you don't you aren't able to see the whole thing okay I mainly here just wanted to show you the bones of the skull and also the sutures so again we have the frontal bone is the forehead bone then the parietal bones, there's one on each side. And the occipital bone is the bone in the um, back of the head. Then the uh, temporal bone and the sphenoid bone, which actually goes all the way through the skull and forms a bridge between the facial and the cranial bones. The zygomatic bone, the maxilla, and the mandible. Um, 
There is a process called the styloid process, the styloid process here, and then the mastoid process. These are both processes of the um, uh, temporal bone. Okay, and then um, the ethmoid bone is the green one. The lacrimal bone is red. The nasal bones are here. Um, okay, now let's talk about the sutures. The coronal suture is the suture between the frontal and the parietal bones. The squamous suture is the suture between the temporal and the parietal bones. And then the um, lambdoid suture is the suture between the parietal bones and the occipital bones. Now let's go back to our notes. Okay, and the pectoral girdle, also called the shoulder girdle, it consists of the clavicle and the scapula. The clavicle is the collarbone, and the scapula is the shoulder blade. And then there's a lot of different notes on um, individual bones. There's the humerus, and then I will go over the bones of the wrist um, with you. The um, and there are different sentences that will help you learn these if you want to Google them. But um, uh, it's a row of four bones. There's it's a total of eight wrist bones, but it's a row of four bones. If you start with um, the proximal carpal bones are the ones that are closest to your forearm, and the distal ones are closest to your hand. Okay. So the proximal carpal bones um, start with, on the very end, there's a bone called the pisiform bone, which is hard to see here. Um, the traquetrum, the lunate, and the scaphoid. And then if we start back um, with the distal carpal bones, we have the hamate, the capitate, the trapezoid, and the trapezium. So um, these are all short bones and they form the carpals and the pisiform bone is the one that gets broken sometimes if you like, um, um, if you fall and you catch yourself with your hand. Let's see, the pelvic girdle consists of the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Those are the three bones and let's look at um, which ones they actually are. The ilium is the largest, the wider bones kind of look, have a shape like a bowl. And then the ischium um, is this yellow bone here. And the pubis is the one that, that is most medial. So the, the, um, there's one projection for, on the ischium that I want you to know about. The ischial tuberosity is your sitting bone. That's the bone that when you sit down, that's the bone you're sitting on. That's the ischial tuberosity, which is a projection from the ischium. This is showing you the difference between a male and a female pelvis. Um, notice how much wider the female pelvis is, and this angle between the um, angle that forms right here at the pubic sy um, symphysis is called the pubic angle is much wider in the female than in the male. And this is um, because the baby has to come through there. So, you know, that's the reason for that. Um, and then we have, let's see. I want to move, uh, There's here's the ankle bones. The ankle bones are called the tarsal bones and they consist of short bones. The talus, calcaneus, navicular, cuboid, medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms. Um, and the heel bone is the calcaneus bone. And, and they're shown here, it's probably easier to see in the side view. The heel bone is the calcaneus. The talus is, the, is a large chunky bone here. And we have the cuboid, 
the cuneiform bones on the top of the foot, the navicular, um, and then here we can see the lateral intermediate uh, bone and the medial bone. Um, let's see. Which of the two, let's look at 33. I just like the way this question is worded. Which of the two bones of the forearm is lateral in the anatomical position? And that's going to be the one that is associated with the thumb, which is, is going to be the radius. Which three bones make up a hip bone, ilium, ischium, and pubis? Um, 36... While jumping off the back steps at his house, 10-year-old Caesar lands on his right heel and breaks his foot. Which bone is most likely broken? That would be the calcaneus. Okay, now we're going to move on and talk about joints, and this should be our last topic. Um, joints can be classified by structure. If they're classified by structure, we say that they are fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Fibrous and cartilaginous have limited movement. Synovial joints have are their freely movable joints. These are the joints that we typically think of, like your um, knee joint, your elbow joint, your shoulder joint, your hip joint. These are all synovial joints. Um, when they're classified by, by function, we classify them based on range of motion or amount of mobility. So a synarthrosis is immovable. And amphiarthrosis has slight movement, and diarthrosis is freely movable. One thing that you can remember is that a synovial joint is always a diarthrosis joint. And here's the classifications. Um, in the synarthrosis joints, you can have a suture, a gonfosis, or a synchondrosis. A suture, like the skull sutures, is a type of fibrous synarthrosis. A gonfosis is between the teeth and the sockets that they're in. Um, and I'm really thinking about those right now because I have a what's called a dry socket. I had a wisdom tooth removed and it is very painful but um, getting better. So a suture and a gonfosis are both fibrous joints and they're synarthrosis. They don't allow any movement. And then there's a synchondrosis, which is a cartilaginous um, synarthrosis joint. And that occurs between the first pair of ribs and the sternum. And also the epiphyseal cartilages or the epiphyseal plates that form in the bones as they are growing before they, are, um, before they close up and are called the epiphyseal line. Those are synchondroses. Then we have uh, joints with little movement called amphiarthroses. A syndesmosis is a fibrous amphiarthrosis, and it is a, um, the ligamentous connection between the tibia and fibula. And then a symphysis is a cartilaginous amphiarthrosis, and the pubic symphysis is, a, is an example of that. Synovial joints are always diarthrosis joints. They're always free movement. Um, sutures connect skull bones, gonfosis is the ligament that binds each tooth in the socket, and then the syndesmosis um, attaches the tibia to the fibula and the radius to the ulna. So the two bones of the lower leg and the two bones of the forearm are attached by syndesmosis. And these are immovable joints classified as synarthroses because they are immovable. And then slightly movable joints can be a synchondrosis. Um, and the examples there were the first pair of ribs and the sternum. And um, the one that's not listed is the epiphyseal cartilage. And then this, uh, uh, the pubic symphysis is an example of an amphiarthrosis. Freely movable joints or diarthroses are always synovial joints. Um, additional structures that you might find in a synovial joint. Well, let's talk about first um, at the ends of the bones in a synovial joint, we have articular cartilage, which we've talked about before. We have a joint capsule, joint capsule.